Budget DACs are supposed to be basic, but the Fossey Audio ZD3 is not. It has a feature that totally changes how you can use it in your hi-fi setup. Plus, it's truly inexpensive, coming at $150. Please hit the like button and I'll show you exactly what makes it so special. This little box actually looks pretty sleek for what it costs. Fossey went with a clean, all black, anodized aluminum shell. There are subtle orange accents to the volume knob and some elements of the GUI. They give you a surprisingly modern and refined look. The volume knob itself is a highlight. Metal, smooth and tactile. And in my opinion, it feels fine. Nothing premium, but it's also not poor. Next to it sits a small display. It's compact, but super easy to read from across your desk. It shows you everything you need. Your input, volume level and sample rate. The software design is on par with the latest SMSL products, and it's hugely better than their older offerings. Underneath, the feet hold it steady on the desk and cut down on vibration. The unit's overall weight is light, surely less than a kilo. It's below 700 grams according to the spec sheet. There is just one aspect of this deck that I can't get over. If you tap or spin the volume knob quickly, you might catch a subtle echo inside, like a hollow chamber effect. It's faint, quick and doesn't affect the performance, but it reminds you that it's a budget-oriented desktop unit. Still, compared to early Fossey units or brands like AIMA, the ZD3 feels much more put together. It's a good example of how, even under tight budget constraints, companies can optimize their production costs and then reinvest that into better design and build quality. I am genuinely curious to see what $150 DAX are going to sound and feel like in two or three years. What do you think is going to happen? You can let me know in the comments down below. Overall, this is one of the units where the look and feel punch somewhat above the price point. It doesn't try to mimic luxury gear, but it avoids the cheap DIY vibe that's all too common in this range. Refinement and incremental improvements is what Fossey went for with this one. It is a very clear step up for the brand. The ZD3 doesn't skimp much when it comes to connectivity. On the input side, you've got all the usual digital suspects, but also a couple of nice surprises. USB is here, of course, handling up to very, very high sample rates if you're on a computer. You also get optical and coaxial, which are great for things like a CD player or a streamer. One of the more unexpected additions is the HDMI ARC. I would personally prefer to have i squared s over this HDMI connector, as it is the best possible digital protocol, but not everything supports it yet. And if you don't want to run any wires whatsoever, the ZD3 has Bluetooth, and it supports aptX HD. Since you are still watching, you might as well subscribe to my channel. On the output side, the ZD3 gives you both balanced XLRs and standard RCAs. What's neat is that both sets of outputs are active at the same time, which is handy if you want to feed two different amplifiers or just keep things flexible without swapping cables around. Inside the ZD3, they added some features you normally wouldn't expect at this price point. One of the biggest ones is the swappable op-amps. That means you're not locked into the stock tuning of this DAC. You can actually upgrade the sound later on just by dropping in a different op-amp. This is a massive plus. On top of that, the ZD3 is built around an ESS DAC chip, which is paired with a very common in DACs nowadays, XMOS USB interface. This interface helps you handle higher resolution formats over standard USB connections. Yes, it's a chip-based DAC, but can you really expect discrete topology at this price point? I don't think so. This combination makes it work for everything from lossless streaming on your computer to more serious digital sources. Additionally, Fossey put a lot of thought into power delivery. Instead of a noisy USB power design, the ZD3 uses an external 
12V DC power supply for cleaner and more high-end performance. Another handy feature is the bypass mode, which lets the ZD3 skip its internal volume control and send out a fixed level signal. That way, if you're using a dedicated preamp or an integrated amplifier, you're getting the purest, most direct output possible. You also get trigger in and out, so the DAC can power up in sync with the rest of your system. Switch one device on and everything follows. It's quite simple and seamless. And if you can appreciate good wireless solutions, SoundPads and their new Air Pro wireless earphones can interest you a lot. I've been using these alongside the DAC I'm testing. I did that when I wanted to listen to the music on the go. And honestly, they hold their own surprisingly well. The Air 5 Pro supports LDAC and APTX lossless, so if your phone can output Hi-Res over Bluetooth, these can actually take advantage of that, which for 80 bucks is kind of wild. You get respectable sound, lots of modern technologies, and the AI-based ANC is solid. Moreover, it does not kill the soundstage. Battery life is great too. So if you're after a wireless option, definitely check this out. First up, the signal-to-noise ratio, or SNR. The ZD3 clocks in at 126 decibels. It's a big number, but simply put, it means the background noise is nearly inaudible. Most DACs in this price range land around 110 decibels, so the ZD3 giving you 126 is a solid step up, and decibels are logarithmic, not linear, so keep that in mind. Now let's talk output voltage. This one is handy to know if you're pairing this DAC with different equipment. On the balanced XLRs, it pushes around 5 volts RMS. The unbalanced RCAs come in just under that, at 2.5 volts RMS. It means that this DAC should not be problematic, as those voltages are pretty much industry standard ones, and it's not something overly high or unusually low. Then there is the dynamic range which is around 123 decibels according to Fossey's own specs, but I also found a full spec sheet that says it's 126. Then it would match the SNR. Either way, that's excellent. Dynamic range is basically how well the DAC can go from the quietest dips to the loudest peaks without distortion creeping in. The first thing you will pick up on is how clean the output is. It's easy to forget that you have a budget duck in the chain, as it doesn't do anything outright wrong. Tonally, the ZD3 sits mostly in a neutral territory, but with a little sparkle at the top end. Vocals come through natural and alive, almost lively. String instruments have a realistic body, and the very top end detail, like cymbal shimmer or breath, is present without harshness. It's crisp. Not shrill. Bass response is tight and controlled. You won't get deep, booming lows like a high-end artoir duck, but for the price, it holds its own. It goes for quality and cleanliness over quantity. Where it doesn't shine as much is the depth dimension. The soundstage is not claustrophobic, giving you nice left-to-right placement, but the depth the layers that pull you into a virtual space feels a bit flat. Instruments sit side to side without retreating backward into the 3D space. It works, but it doesn't disappear. That said, it handles dynamics okay. Quiet passages breathe, and louder sections still retain detail without sounding compressed. Switching into bypass mode tightens things up. It gives you a more immediate, upfront sound by skipping the internal volume stage. The music feels more present. It's a subtle change, but it's there if you're looking for it. It's also the very reason why I prefer DAX with no volume control whatsoever. At the end of the day, the ZD3 doesn't wow you with super deep depth or sonic fireworks. For everyday listening, whether it's acoustic tracks or modern electronica, it keeps you engaged but without fighting your ears too much. 